Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, so now let's talk silver. This is one of those videos that is extremely exciting. It's something that I enjoy making, even beyond just my daily silver stacking videos. And that's because this topic is so relevant with the stuff that I talk about, that I represent on my channel, which is we don't have enough silver for the world to go green. This new digital technological era that we're advancing in, needing boatloads of silver that we just do not have. Well, I always use Elon Musk as the mascot since he owns Tesla and SpaceX and Solar City, and those are those are the primary things that are going to need the most silver, which is just it doesn't add up. If you look at the numbers, which numbers don't lie, you look at the numbers, the production, look at the demand, look at recycling, factoring in byproduct. It just we just don't have enough silver for the world to go green. And this isn't some new revelation. I've been talking about this for years. So has Andy Schechtman, so has David Morgan, which personally wrote a letter to Elon Musk, even Mike Maloney. We all have been talking about this, but it seems now mainstream media has finally caught on. And like Mike Maloney said in his open letter to Elon Musk, hey, if you're not buying silver right now and you're planning on making X amount of Teslas by the year 2030, you're going to have to be paying billions of dollars if you're waiting until silver hits triple digits, yada, yada, yada. Regardless though, I think Elon Musk knows what he's doing. I mean, he's a genius. Well, some could argue that, but regardless, if he isn't investing into silver right now and lithium and these other metals, he's screwed. And beyond Elon, I use him as the mascot because he's just the most relevant public figure we could attach an idea to looking at this, this, this situation. But think about Apple. Think about, you know, iPhones and, and everything, laptops. Think about literally everything silver is used for on a bigger forefront. If you want the newest, latest iPhone, you better hope that they're buying silver or willing to pay the price as it goes up. Uh, so when we look at this, just try to look at the bigger picture. Look at the macro. I'm someone that always tries to look at the macro. And that's because this situation is getting more severe. And I don't think people understand the, the, how devastating this could be as we're trying to save the planet from global warming and climate change by going green. By going green, right? Zero net emissions by the year 2030 or 2040. I don't know if that's possible if we don't have the, the materials to make all these solar panels and these electric vehicles. You want to know a big fact that's very, very important to incorporate in this situation? Every automobile company by the year 2030 is going to be electric. Think about that. So anyways, we have a lot of different stuff to break down in this video. I really hope you stick through this entire thing because there's layers to this. We're first going to go over this one because I, I do like that. And, and this is part of the research I did in this video. I kind of, um, I, I, I separated it. First, we're going to go into this, which is talking about, you know, th th this whole thing, even politically. And then we're going to go into the second article from CNBC, and it's going into the lithium business. But remember, silver lithium ion batteries, and remember, silver is mainly a byproduct. So when he's looking for lithium or any other thing, silver is highly incorporated, and he knows this. He knows this. He's not going to publicly come out and say that he's buying silver or stacking silver necessarily because that would shoot the price up. And that's the last thing he wants, especially as he's, you know, so deep in the hole with Twitter right now. So we're going to look at that. We're even going to look at his tweets. And then we're going to look at some other things that are incorporated with the pricing of lithium. We can incorporate the pricing of silver. We could even, you know, there's so much to this. But the third article is the one that is the meat and potatoes. And that is really explaining it all. So if you like the video, then please like the video. I post daily videos every single day, giving you the newest, latest, freshest, most up-to-date recent information in the world of precious metals, more specifically silver. We're on the road to 100K, so let's do this. Link to these articles will be in the description. Elon Musk is open to buying a mining company, maybe in Latin America. 
So concern is mounting across the EV industry that there might not be enough supply of lithium, nickel, copper, and other metals to match demand later in this decade. And it's funny that they don't mention silver because silver is probably the one that is the most dire, the one that could have the biggest impact. Silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and light sensitivity. I mean, copper is a close second, but the quality just isn't there. Scientists are trying to figure out ways to reduce the amount of silver, but silver is something that cannot be replaced currently. So it's funny that they're mentioning all these other ones where silver is the biggest game changer and the one that is needed the most. Regardless, though, Tesla sources the vast majority of its battery cells from suppliers. It actually sources a large part of the materials used to build those batteries directly from mines. This approach is going to be critical as companies fight to secure those minerals for battery production to support electric vehicle growth. It's so funny that people are finally catching on to this, right? We would, you would never find an article like this back in 2020, 2021. Um, so another thing is, since he is also someone that understands supply and demand, and he knows what low supply, high demand does to uh, a metal that pushes the price up, why, instead of buying silver and lithium and copper from all these suppliers, why not just buy the mine himself and then mine these metals? Lithium is one of the forefront interest of miners in Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, uh, and that sit atop the so-called lithium triangle, a region containing nearly 56% of the world's resources of the metal. Meanwhile, Mexico has no commercial lithium production, but boasts potential deposits that, if proven economically viable, could catapult in major producer status, which is why its Congress passed a bill to nationalize the metal, tightening control of strategic mineral resources. And the hardest part probably for Elon hearing this is since Mexico has no commercial lithium production, well, Mexico and Peru are the two largest producers of silver. They accumulate nearly half, around 40, 45 percent of all the silver, uh, the silver mined globally annually. Those, those two countries alone. So Tesla and most EV manufacturers have no experience with the time-intensive and laborious task of building and operating a mine. So industry analysts have advised automaker to focus on buying an existing operator. And many in the mining industry have noted that buying an existing metals producer would call, cost far less than the $44 billion Musk offered to personally buy social media network Twitter earlier this year, which he actually did follow through and buy for around $40 billion, and it's looking like it was a terrible business decision. And now to think that he already is in the hole with that, struggling with that, which I think he's actually talking about passing the crown to someone else. But regardless, he's in that mess, probably lost a boatload of money. And now he also is trying to figure out how he's going to get these resources to, for his companies like SpaceX and Tesla and SolarCity to move forwards. I mean, he's in a very, very stressful situation that could be devastating for, for the livelihood of us even so, not just his. So it says here that Argentina is a jurisdiction that may well have a suitable candidate for Musk as the country expects to receive a $4.2 billion combined investment in its growing lithium market over the next five years, which would help the country double production in 2023 to reach 175,000 tons in 2025. The country has already attracted major players, including the world's second largest miner, Rio Tinto, and South Korean steelmaker Posco. It is funny that these, these articles don't mention silver at all. Maybe one of these other ones do, but right now, I mean, that could be a good thing, but that could also be a really bad thing. If, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, we'll get a pretty penny when silver explodes because we'd run out of it, but at what cost? You know, so Tesla, as well as other electric vehicle manufacturers, are already working in Latin America's mining industry in other respects. For example, Vale, Brazil's largest mining company, has signed a long term contract with Tesla to supply class one nickel for its EV initiatives. German automaker BMW has signed a deal where Livent, a company that has invested $640 million to extract lithium in the Argentine province, of Catamarca will become the brand's second largest supplier of the mineral in 2022. It's, it's, it's just so crazy. I mean, yes, obviously resources, metals are needed for other things, but 
Silver's the one, and I've, I've even showed charts of each metal and when we're supposed to run out of it, and silver is the, the most recent. It's the closest. Gold, I think it's, they're saying in like 10 years or something, uh, but silver was, I think, by the year 2025 or, or something along those lines, not incorporating recycling and, um, you know, other, other ways. But regardless, we need a new way to produce silver, and that might be mining innovation, right, how we find it out of the Earth's crust, maybe more, more focal silver mines. Uh, recycling could be another one. You could try to cut down the amount of silver in each EV. There's around 58 grams of silver per EV right now. They're, they're trying to cut it down to like 20 something. Um, but also space mining, and that's not a reality right now, but there is an asteroid called 16 Psych, which is headed towards Earth around the year 2025, 2026. NASA already sent out a rover to check out this thing because it supposedly is covered with uh, around $500 quintillion worth of precious metals, including silver. So if they could mine this thing, which I don't think space mining will be realistic by the year 2026, but they're, they're looking towards the final frontier for this. And one day, I'm sure that will be a thing. Uh, so anyways, yeah, in Bolivia, former President Evo Morales tried to broker international lithium agreements last year before removed in a coup, and the new president campaigned on a platform of developing lithium resources for the public benefit. Anyways, let's, let's go, uh, let, let, let's dig into some other ones. So here's CNBC. Elon Musk says Tesla may have to get into lithium business because costs are so insane. Elon Musk tweeted Tesla may get into the lithium mining and refining business directly at, and at scale because of the cost of the metal, a key component in manufacturing batteries have gotten so high. And if he's looking at batteries getting so high and having to adjust his strategy, his business strategy towards that, then I'm sure the same would follow for silver. And when Mike Maloney actually sent his letter to Elon Musk, Elon Musk did acknowledge it. So he knows. I mean, he's a genius. He knows. Silver, I mean, obviously, he understands the importance of silver in his, in his companies, and he has to understand um, the, how scarce it is, and, and it even include if he doesn't have a direct supplier, he's screwed. Imagine having to pay premiums, and it's looking like instead of going to a direct supplier, he's going to just become the supplier himself by buying these mines. So Elon Musk tweeted, Tesla may get into lithium mining and refining business directly at scale. Price of lithium has gone to insane levels, Musk tweeted. There is no shortage of the element itself as lithium is almost everywhere on earth, but pace of extraction refinement is slow. And that's interesting to say that even though there's no shortage, the price is still high because of the pace of extraction. So it's looking like he's trying to mine it to ramp up the pace. Now there is a shortage of silver. So I don't know why he wouldn't, I mean, honestly, it probably makes sense because since silver is a byproduct, if he's mining lithium, he's gonna be finding silver as well. So the Tesla and SpaceX tech boss was responding to a tweet showing the average price of lithium per ton in the last two decades. Massive increase since 2021. Metal's gone up more than 480% in the last year. Wow. In the last year, it, this is per ton. 2012, it was $4,450 per ton. Now in 2022, we're looking at 78, that, wow. 2021 was 17,000 and in 2022 it's $78,000. What? It went from $17,000 in 2021 to $78,000 in 2022. If lithium could do that, why couldn't silver? And that's what I'm talking about, folks. Think about that. If lithium could do that and there's not even a shortage of lithium, then why wouldn't silver be able to do the same thing? That's something very important to take note of. There is indeed deposits of lithium all over the United States. Lithium is valuable in electric vehicles. Batteries, because of its both lightest metal and the least dense solid element, means batteries are made with lithium have higher power-to-weight ratio. 
I mean, think of silver lithium ion batteries. It makes sense. Lithium can do that. And then silver, obviously, is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity and electricity. So those two together are perfect for batteries. So now let's, let's move to this third article. This is the important one. I hope you guys are sticking through. I know this is a long video, but there's just so much to this. And if you have stuck around in the video this long, pat yourself on the back because you wanted to get every single piece of information. Most people probably clicked off this video within two, three minutes thinking they know it all or that they don't need to know anymore. And this is important stuff, especially this is the meat and potatoes of this video. So pat yourself on the back, seriously. It, it shows a lot about your character and I'm sure this will reflect into your strategy as well if you are still hearing these words that are coming out of my mouth. Elon Musk Tesla open to buying a mining company. So Tesla's willing to buy if it means facilitating the global adoption of clean energy technologies. And I don't think that Musk is really just this, 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 um, this person that's pushing for, for global warming and climate change. I think he's just trying to make money from this new green era taking advantage. I know he does want to put people on Mars, and that's probably something, uh, a little bit of an e egotistical goal uh, or curiosity, but I don't think he really cares about zero net emissions by the year 2040. I think he just wants to be the one to do it since he's smart enough and he has the resources to. So S CEO Elon Musk has squashed rumors that electric car makers might acquire another automaker, but he has indicated that Tesla may be interested in buying a mining company. So Tesla's market value soared above $500 billion earlier this year. Speculation is rife that the company could take over smaller, uh, more established automakers. However, at the, FIA, the FT Futures of the car conference, Elon Musk made it clear that this is not something Tesla is considering. Instead, he's more concerned about mining companies, and that's minerals such as lithium or boron used in electric vehicle batteries. It's crazy. They even talk about boron and nickel, but they don't talk about silver. That is just, it's appalling to me. Like how, like out of all these metals, like who talks about boron? When's the last time you heard about boron? Like what? Why? It's, it's insane to me. It just shows how, how, I guess, in the dark people are about the the important stuff, uh, or, or the um, the important uh, w factors and variables that we need to move forwards. They just they're just throwing out information that they hear and saying Elon Musk will fix this or whatever. They, they don't understand. This is something that's much more severe than I think they realize, and they think it's just going to all fall into place, but it's not. The automotive industry faces a metal supply crisis with electric vehicle manufacturer Tesla at the forefront. So they're looking at 20 million electric cars annually by the year 2030. That's a lot of silver needed. And just under 1 million were made last year. So think about that. Think about how much more silver he's going to need. But all metals. And I think we even might get into a play where all metals might just start exploding like lithium did from 17000 to 78000 dollars within a year 480% increase something like that imagine um imagine nickel like it did imagine um even palladium what did palladium do look at platinum look at all these metals gold right it wouldn't be surprising if all these metals, as they become more scarce over the next decade, as we advance, all of these are going to you know, become more scarce. Silver is the cheapest, the smartest investment, but it does make sense. And do you invest in anything else? I've heard some people do invest into like platinum. I've seen some platinum. I know a lot of us do buy gold as well. I know some people will buy copper. I don't really know anyone that buys nickel. Um, copper is just, it's so much, it, there, there's so much of it because it's so cheap. Storage is a huge problem. So any, anyways, though, let's keep moving on. This is looking more of the Twitter stuff. Um, la, la, la. Yeah, that's just Twitter stuff. But right here, this is where we need to look at. So why is Musk interested in a mining company? Why is 
Why? Lithium is a critical ingredient in EV batteries. EVs demand or EVs continue to grow, so does the need for lithium the demand. Tesla plans to meet that demand by getting into lithium mining business. So it announced its entry into the mining business at its Battery Day event in 2020, beginning with purchasing lithium claims on 10,000 acres in Nevada. This represents a significant shift for the company, which has previously relied on third-party suppliers for its lithium requirements. I mean, and then think about silver. If he doesn't have a direct supplier, like David Morgan said, imagine having to pay premiums nowadays. However, it has yet to act on this claim or the new technology nearly two years later. And that's the, that's the part which is a little confusing. With lithium prices 400% higher than when the announcement was made, EV manufacturers appears, EV manufacturer appears to be making more moves in the space. They're still focusing on acquiring long-term supply deals with existing mining communities and potential new mines. Still buying a mining company outright to take over all of its workforces and accelerate development is not out of the question. And there was actually a new mine, silver mine actually, that was supposed to be made in Canada, but it actually got shut down because people rallied it, uh, rallied and, and went on strike there because it was going to affect their water supply, which is kind of ironic because silver purifies water. Now I understand that it still would with all the other stuff in the waste, but it's just funny that they're, <laughs> that something that purifies water is, uh, it, you know, they're going on strike for it. And it's just kind of ironic to me, but Regardless, yeah, we. Th this is something that I think is just the start, like I've been talking about. I've been talking about how Elon Musk is the mascot for this situation, but it's much bigger than him. And uh, I think you can now see why I've been talking about this, and now it seems like everyone else is finally understanding as well. So yeah, anyways, let me know what you think about this video. If you want to purchase some of that shiny stuff, click the link in the bottom left-hand corner. Send an email to them. That's Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. They'd love to hear it. Andy would love to hear it. We do a weekly show. I know the holidays. It's been hard. He's, a, he's the CEO of, of one of the biggest precious metals dealers. So he's a hard, you know, it, it's hard for him. And since myself, I'm a single father, you know. We still try to do it weekly, though. Usually on Wednesdays, go check out. We have a, I have a whole playlist of all of our interviews. We've done like five, maybe six so far, um, and it's a great time. He exposes a lot, especially since Miles Franklin's one of the only few authorized dealers that still works with the U.S. Mint. It can be very beneficial moving forwards. Um, their website's actually going to be launched soon. Um, the soft launch is already up, but... Um, I still recommend buying through them, even if the website isn't up. Just send an email, ask them what their their price list is or what they have right now. They have the best deals out there. They'll hook you up. And um, I think moving forward, this could be extremely important since Andy is a top dog. He has all the resources and connections. Uh, like he filled that $50 million order a couple months ago where nobody else could. Atmex can't fill an order like that. Andy can find silver like that. So moving forwards, if something were to happen to your order or something, he personally could know you and he'll fix it. He'll solve it. That's why they never had a negative, um, a negative review in over 40-something years because even if they do make mistakes, which he admits sometimes they do, he always makes it right. And that's the important thing. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Make sure you like the video if you liked the video. Make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 100K. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.